I recently took on the 2024 MIT Integration B Finals and problem five on that final, which is often or rather pretty much always the most absurd problem on the finals, was this monstrous floor integral function, floor function integral type problem. And my solution development, as well as the solution development of fellow math YouTuber Daniel Rosado, both made use of the Fibonacci numbers. And I found that really interesting because that was the first time I had to invoke the Fibonacci numbers explicitly here on the channel. And today the second. We're looking at an infinite series. It's the sum over the non-negative integers k of 1 by f to the 2k plus 1 plus 1. And to solve this infinite series, we're going to have to look into how the Fibonacci numbers are generated. There's this really cool generating formula for them where the Fibonacci number f sub k is given by phi, the golden ratio, to the k minus phi bar to the k, which is sort of the conjugate of the golden ratio divided by root 5. Now we know that phi here equals 1 plus root 5 by 2, and phi bar here equals 1 minus root 5 by 2. And it'll be nice if I just make some algebraic adjustments to the phi barred term over here. This can be written as 1 minus 1 plus root 5 by 2, which is of course equal to 1 minus phi. Now the golden ratio is defined by this very neat equation that is the number satisfying phi squared minus phi minus 1 equal to 0, which implies that phi... Uh, what exactly are we looking at? We're looking at 1 minus phi. So let me multiply both sides by the reciprocal of phi. So that will give me phi minus 1 minus 1 by phi equal to 0, which implies that phi minus 1 equals 1 by phi. Okay, cool. So that means phi bar can be written as the negative of 1 by phi. So that means I can rephrase or rewrite the equation as f sub k being equal to phi to the k minus negative 1 to the k times 1 by phi to the k divided by root 5. Now in our infinite series, we're only interested in the odd values of k. So that means we, we replace k by 2k plus 1. So we have f sub 2k plus 1 being equal to phi to the 2k plus 1 minus negative 1 to the 2k plus 1 times 1 by phi to the 2k plus 1 divided by root 5. And negative 1 to some odd integer is always going to be negative 1, so this implies that f sub 2k plus 1 equals phi to the 2k plus 1 minus, no wait, two negatives cancel out, so we get a positive 1 by phi to the 2k plus 1 divided by root 5. I think by now you have an idea of the kind of approach I'm going for. We're just going to tackle this infinite series head on. So we needed the reciprocal of f sub 2k plus 1 plus 1, right? So let me write this as f sub 2k plus 1 plus 1, and this should be equal to simplifying. We get phi to the 4k plus 2, Terribly. Sorry about the phi to the 4k plus 2 plus 1 divided by root 5 times phi to the 2k plus 1 plus 1. And again, some more simplification is in order. That means we have phi to the 4k plus 2 plus root 5 times phi to the 2k plus 1 plus 1. 1 divided by root 5 times phi to the 2k plus 1. All of this equals f sub 2k plus 1 plus 1. Now, we're interested in the reciprocal of this thing on the left-hand side. So that implies that 1 by f sub 2k plus 1 plus 1 equals root 5 divided by... No, wait, it's root 5 times f times phi to the 2k plus 1 divided by phi to the 4k plus 2 plus root 5 times phi to the 2k plus 1 
plus one. Okay, cool. And we're interested in the sum of the whole thing over the non-negative integers. Okay, so let me just give myself some more writing space. And there we go. So we have, we need rather the sum over k. Now just for a moment, we're going to make a sort of substitution here. We're just renaming the phi to the 2k plus 1 thing as u so that we can, so that it's easier to write anyway. So what I'm interested in now is a partial fraction decomposition for u divided by u squared plus root 5 times u plus 1. So I need a divided by something plus b divided by something, and that something would be the factors of the quadratic polynomial in the denominator on the left-hand side. So let's factorize this by looking at the roots of the equation. We have u squared plus u times root 5 plus 1. There was nothing wrong with that, just my handwriting seemed way more off than usual. Anyway, so if we're solving this equation, I might as well just invoke the quadratic formula boy. And we have negative root 5 plus or minus 5 minus 4 divided by 2. And this equals plus or minus 1 minus root 5 by 2. Okay, cool. So we have a couple of roots of the equation. We have u equal to negative 1 minus root 5 by 2. Rather, let me write this as the positive case first. And we have u equal to negative 1 minus root 5 by 2. Now, u equals or 1 minus root 5 by 2. That is, of course, 1 by 5. We saw that earlier. And here, u can be written as 1 minus 1 plus root 5 by 2, if I'm not mistaken. No, wait, I am horribly mistaken. This should be plus sign over here, a negative sign over here, and then a minus 1 over here. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Now, so that means u could be equal to 1 by phi, or u could be equal to, no, wait a second, that was phi bar. This should be negative 1 by phi. And here we have 1 by phi minus 1. Okay, this is not bad at all. But we can actually simplify this a bit further. And of course, if I remember to put the negative sign there. Uh -huh. We have u equal to negative 1 minus phi divided by phi, which is of course negative 1 by phi times 1 plus phi. And we know that 1 plus phi is phi squared, which implies that u equals negative 1 by phi, or u equals negative phi. Okay, cool. So that means for our partial fraction decomposition, we have u divided by, what exactly do we have? Yeah, it was u squared, plus u times root 5 plus 1. This would be a divided by u plus phi, plus b divided by u plus 1 by phi. I mean, one subscriber commented on a video that 2 involved the golden ratio. He said that whenever phi is somewhere in a problem, it's everywhere. And yes, he is absolutely right. You can see it's everywhere even right now. Okay, so now to get our, now to get the required values of a and b, this implies that u equals a times u plus 1 by phi plus b times u plus phi. So we're first going to take the value of u equal to negative phi, which implies that we have negative phi equal to a times phi. No, wait, it's negative phi plus 1 by phi. And on some simplification, we're going to have negative phi equal to a times 1 minus phi squared divided by phi. 
Now, what exactly is 1 minus 5 squared? Well, we know the phi squared minus 5 minus 1 equals 0, so that implies the phi squared minus 1 equals phi. Yeah, so that should be negative phi. So this implies that we have negative phi equal to a divided a times negative phi divided by phi, some lovely cancellation implying that a equals phi. What did I tell you? It's everywhere. Now for the value of b, we're going to take the value of u equal to negative 1 by phi. That means on the left-hand side, we have negative 1 by phi equal to a times 0 plus b times u, which is negative 1 by phi plus phi. Okay, so we have b times phi squared minus 1 divided by phi. And we know the phi squared minus 1 is phi. So again, we have some cancellation. And all of that implies that b equals negative 1 by phi. Okay, everything's looking good so far. So this implies that u divided by u squared plus u times root 5 plus 1 equals... What exactly was it? It was a, and a is phi, divided by u plus phi, and b was negative 1 by phi. So it's negative 1 by phi times u plus 1 by phi, which looks pretty damn cool. And it looks even better once you remember that u was in fact phi to the 2k plus 1. So we have that divided by phi to the 4k plus 2 plus phi to plus phi times root 5, that is. No, it is phi to something, phi to the 2k plus 1 times root 5 now, plus 1. And all of this is supposed to equal phi divided by phi to the 2k plus 1 again, plus phi uh, minus 1 by phi times phi to the 2k plus 1, plus 1 by phi. And now because the right-hand side has phi is everywhere, so I might as well just ex do the expansion and simplification thingies. So for the first term, we can cancel out a phi. We're left with phi divided by... No, we're left with 1 divided by phi to the 2k plus 1. Okay, looking good. Minus 1 by... Okay, now we have phi to the 2k plus 2 which could be written as phi squared times phi to the 2k plus 1. Okay, cool. And now returning to the summation. Okay, so finally on the right-hand side, we have root 5 times the sum over the non-negative integers k of 1 by, we have phi to the 2k plus 1, minus 1 by phi squared times phi to the 2k plus 1. And this definitely looks like a telescoping series, and thankfully it is. And if we expand some terms here, we have root 5 times first 4k equal to 0. We have 1 by 2 minus 1 by phi squared plus 1. Then we have for the k equal to 1 term, 1 by phi squared plus 1. See, the telescoping is already happening minus 1 by phi to the fourth power plus 1, and of course for k equals 2, we have, why is this thing always so hard? Ah! Oh! Ah! Uh, slightly better. Not half bad, I'll give myself that. Anyway, but this is incredibly hard to write sometimes. Uh, where was I? Ah, yes, for the k equal to 2 term. No, wait, I was done with that. Yeah, for k equal to 2 now. We have plus 1 by phi to the 4th power plus 1 minus 1 by phi to the 6th power plus 1, and so on and so forth. So we see some... See, that right curly brace looks so damn good. And now it's unsettling. Anyway, I have something that will cheer you up. It's this lovely cancellation. I mean, every math nerd loves it when the terms just cancel out, and they'll keep canceling out. And finally, we get root 5 by 2, which is, of course, adorable. That's a very cute little result, but, you know, 
when it comes to me with results, I love doing these little tweaks from time to time. I'm going to expand using one half. Wow, so that means here we have the golden ratio. Like I said, when, well, like my subscribers said, when phi is somewhere in a problem, it's everywhere. So we conclude that the sum over the non negative integers k of 1 by Fibonacci 2k plus 1 plus 1. That sounds like a really cool video game, by the way. Fibonacci 2k plus 1. This equals the golden ratio of phi minus one half, which is a beautiful result indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.